Uh, hello and welcome. I'm Debbie Bergia with Winter Grace Senior Ministries. Sometimes we come to the point where we need additional care for ourselves or a loved one in our home. Fortunately, we have organizations in our community, such as Medicis, who can address these needs for us. I am joined by Stephanie Owens, Registered Nurse and Clinical Transitions Coordinator for Medicis. Stephanie, I am so glad you were with us today. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for having me. Oh, you are welcome. Please tell us about Emeticis and the services that you all offer. Uh, so Emeticis is a home care agency and we provide skilled services for um, clients out in the community for assisted livings. Uh, we provide skilled nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, a home health aide, a speech therapy, and a social worker. Um, all covered, majority of them under the your loved one's insurance benefit. And you, so you have a whole team of healthcare professionals that can come out to the home? Yes, ma'am. So we work as a team to be able to individualize the care. So how, how does that work? Do you have someone, if I call you and I say, we have a need in our home, where do we go from there? Uh, when I, After I talk to you or your loved one, then I reach out to the primary care physician um, and talk to them about the services that we could assist with. Um, I receive an order from them, and then I process that order with our scheduling team as well as our community uh, clinicians in order to be able to get out there. Okay, so then, um, so do you come out, or does someone, like one person come out and do an assessment there, or is it just that conversation with the primary care? Um, before COVID, I was able to come out and um, meet with clients and their loved ones, um, especially if they were in a nursing home, going back to the, their home or in a hospital and going back to home. But unfortunately, with COVID, we cannot do that. Um, so a lot of it is over the phone communication now. And I am basically the liaison that will be available to them one on one until our team starts to go out. Okay, so you, you brought up COVID. Obviously, we're still, hopeful, well, hopefully we're coming to the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but how, what kind of practices do you have in place through Emeticis for dealing with COVID? Um, I think, um, uh, fortunately for us, Emeticis has uh, really gone above and beyond to make sure that we have all the tools that we need to be able to safely take care of clients. Um, we have all the proper PPE that is necessary. All of our clinicians um, have been offered uh, COVID testing um, or COVID uh, vaccinations, um, and majority of them are choosing to do that. Uh, we also have our teams that are going into assisted livings that are t doing self-testing for COVID testing weekly to ensure that before we go into the buildings that we're protecting everyone in that building, um, as well as following the CDC guidelines. So um, that's one of the major things that Emeticist has really tried to strive to make sure that we're keeping everyone safe. That's great. So I know you have other new things going on at Emeticist than when the last time we talked. And can you please share about those? Yes, we do. So uh, other than our, we have our congestive heart failure program, um, our COPD program, which are both empowerment programs to kind of teach clients how to manage those chronic diseases and help families to understand some of the early signs and symptoms to prevent patients from going back to the hospital. Um, we just rolled out a diabetes management program, um, which is definitely something new in our territory, but not new, of course, in the world. Um, so it is similar to our other empowerment programs. We provide resources um, for logging blood sugars, managing diabetes, dietary restrictions. We have a dietitian that's available to consult for any of our diabetes patients. And then we co coordinate that with the endocrinologist or the primary care doctor that they're following. Oh, wow. So how, what does that look like if someone's in that program? Is it a, an online interaction or is it? It's actually all, um, it's all um, in printed resources. So we don't have anything online because we found that a lot of our community clients don't necessarily have that accessibility. Right. Um, we still have that paper, that paper process out there for them. Personally, I love, I love to read, read and learn from paper rather than having to read online or that's, that's great. Um, so, so we come, so someone is in physical therapy through a medicist. Mm -hmm. so it's, and it's in-home physical therapy. 
Um, and then, so that schedule is set up with that therapist and they work on, they make a schedule with the home, the client. And so that process just plays out like it would if you were going to in-person physical therapy as far as timing and setting up and those kinds of things. It would. So our teams individually go out and um, do an assessment and then develop a plan of care with the client as well as the family um, and the doctor. So our goal is to make sure that everyone's goals of increasing independence, um, different things that they may want to do, walk out to the mailbox without getting short of breath, being able to get their mail, which they haven't maybe done in a while. So the team, the individualized clinician actually develops that plan of care. And then every several weeks reintroduces what the goals are with the client and make sure that they feel like they're progressing or adjust them based off of how they're feeling. Um, so we kind of, uh, it's that, that coordination of care approach with the entire team. Okay. I would imagine in this last year of folks being very restricted to home that you have seen a lot of clients that had that were doing really well have faced de decline and so you're all are in the business of helping them regain and and improve but i imagine this last year has seen a lot of that what we found debbie you're absolutely right what we found this past year was um that a lot of clients were scared to go to rehab centers where they would normally feel comfortable going um, so we've had to adjust our plan of care to be able to make sure that we're doing as much as possible for that client in the home, where we would normally maybe go out for physical therapy once or twice a week. We try to inc increase their services to three to four times a week. Um, then we introduce all of the, the team members kind of spreading out our services so that it's not too overwhelming for the client. Um, and we found that patients are, you know, discharging home sicker because they they, they don't want to be in the hospital. They don't want to go to rehab. So we're, we're definitely utilizing all of our resources to try to keep them home as long as we can. Absolutely. And I, I just, this thought just occurred to me, you're not only providing the medical care services, you're providing interaction and, and engagement that people would be missing out on. Yeah, sometimes we're the home. only people that they've been seeing other than being mm -hmm. in the hospital or um, so that bond is, is, can get very strong and we try to make sure that we're protecting our clinicians as well as the clients that we're taking care of. That's really beautiful. I mean, everyone who is in, in this field of service is in it as part, as, as service and passion for caring for, uh, their clients. And it just is really even shown through more from what I've seen in this last year than, than it ever before, if that was even possible. And so, yeah, the creativity, I think, in all uh, walks of all of our um, communication with the population and, and the socialization now is definitely creative and we do what we can. Um, we are doing a lot of assistance. Sometimes our clinicians are helping with telehealth calls to the doctors. A lot of our clients don't have, they don't have the resources. They don't have a, an iPhone or, you know, things to do Zoom calls. So we are assisting with that to make sure that the, they're being seen, they're being followed, and we're trying to make it as easy as possible. And creativity and, and love for your clients is a great combination. Uh, Stephanie, is there anything else that you'd like to share about Emeticis? No, I really appreciate your time. Um, I love Emeticis. I love what we do. I'm very passionate about it. Um, so I am more than willing to help anyone, even if we can't necessarily help them. I will find somebody who can um, to make sure that everyone's taken care of. Outstanding. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I really appreciate your time and sharing all the services that you offer through Emeticis. Thanks, Debbie. You take care and stay safe. Thank you too. Bye-bye.